gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of The Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle Jr., uh, host of the Black Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club, the I3 Social Club, as well as a lot of different other things as well. We're here on another Sunday afternoon with one of my very special guests. I, t I say that every time I get on the radio, every guest is a special guest to me. Uh, gentleman is on, on Zoom with me. He's uh, in Texas. Uh, I believe is Houston, if I'm, if I'm correct. Uh, him and I met a couple of months ago at a different real estate investment club. And ever since then, we've been, you know, kind of tight as thieves on the, on the phone talking and, and collaborating and doing different things like that. And I do appreciate him taking the time out to be a guest on this show. So, uh, Kenneth, I want you to pronounce your last name because I'm not going to chew that up. So if you could do that for me, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kenneth Chakura. And uh, as he stated, I am from Houston, Texas. Now, how did you gain, get with a name Shakura? Is that, uh, what type of name is that? Oh, that's actually Igbo. Um, it's based out of Nigeria, okay. Southeast Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, I was about to say Ebonics, but you said Igbo. <laughs> <laughs> So now uh, the way I pronounce it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so tell the folks about yourself. Who are you, and uh, what are you about? Definitely. Um, my name's Kitra Kerr. Once again, I'm new to real estate. I've actually joined real estate in February. But uh, as far as what I've been doing before that, I was uh, I'm in IT. Been in IT for 15 plus years. Also, I also served as a uh, a liaison in the sense of selling commodities based commodity goods based in um in africa in particular wow. and moving and getting those commodity goods to the united states such as raw diamonds mangoes you know different tropical fruits that are specialty to that uh to that uh geographic so you got some diamonds for me then right <laughs> hey if you if you got some buyers i got some diamonds <laughs> raw diamonds uh, hey what, what I, we I have the specs. It's all about what you need. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, take it that you're from Nigeria. How long you been in the states? I'm actually from uh, the states. My father is from Nigeria. My mother's from Louisiana. Oh, okay. Oh, got a little mixture yeah. going on then. Okay. Exactly. They met in college. <laughs> you know, if you if you meet a Nigerian from like the '80s, there's a good chance he's uh, married to an American woman, and that uh, he's been here. You know, as long as anybody else. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, where did you grow up at? I actually grew up in this small town called Winder, Georgia. Uh, I was from Atlanta, lived there until I was eight, but I uh, moved to Winder, and I've been claiming it ever since. Okay, I you know, you know, I used to live in Atlanta. I was all over. I lived in Atlanta, Decatur. They call it the Deck. I also yep. lived in uh, uh, Forest Park, uh, Lithonia, uh, Conyers. Oh yeah, I lived all over. You know. Uh, I left there. Matter of fact, my number is still 404, so that's the best part about it. I see it. it on the phone. When you call me, I'm like, hey, you, you see that? My number is 770. So. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, let's let's get into it and uh, wanted to uh, get the audience to know you a little bit better and a little bit about your background, uh, uh, your education-wise and things like that before we go into the uh, real estate side. Definitely. Um well, as far as education is concerned, I actually uh, started out, once I graduated high school, I went to Columbus State University. Um, I initially played basketball for a couple of years, but uh, decided uh, I wasn't going to make it to the pros, so <laughs> the amount of effort I was putting in just wasn't worth it. <laughs> and uh, I ended up getting a, a degree in business management. From there, I started working at a bank, and um, it, was, it, basically like, it was a loan company of sorts. And after six months, I was like, you know what? This business thing in regards to banking is not for me. So I went back to school again. I actually went back for uh, for web for, uh, for web specialist. And while, uh, while doing that, that's kind of how I got involved in IT. And uh, so from 2010 all the way to, um, no, from 2009 all the way to now, I've been in IT ever since. And I also have another degree in cybersecurity. So... Uh, uh, I have a lot of specialties in, in IT in particular. Okay, so uh, web designing. Uh, when you talk about web designing, are you talking about, excuse me, designing somebody's website and maintaining that? Or what does that consist of? 
I think this is a multitude of things. Uh, initially, what they teach you is is a formulation of design, how to design websites. But for the most part, they teach you kind of how to maintain a website, how to be a web administrator. Um, basically, you know, how to run someone's site uh, from from the front end to the back end. But as far as, you know, they, they basically try to give you like pure skills so you can go out into the world and make money. But to be frankly honest with you, I wasn't great at that. I ended up finding out what my niche was while being in IT. Oh, because I was going to ask you, hey, I got a website I need you to help me with. <laughs> Man, I, 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 can, I got people. <laughs> so uh, moving on from that, um, the question is, is after you find out what your niche is, then what you end up doing? Uh, once I found out, uh, once they actually brought me in, I actually joined and um, it, it, for District Governor, rest his soul, he passed away maybe 10 years ago. Um, I ended up getting to this opportunity in Virginia, moved to Virginia, D.C. area, and this opportunity was with ABI, and I started as an internet uh, specialist, or a, as we all call an IT web editor. And from there, I ended up maneuvering to, you know, being a webmaster, and then I found my niche. And my niche was basically leading teams, uh, selling products, selling uh, applications or, you know, the value applications to different uh, stakeholders. And, you know, just being someone that was, uh, you know, tremendous in terms of training, networking, communicating, just, you know, just someone with very good soft skills. Okay. So you in Virginia, then you leave Virginia, then uh, how did you end up in the, in the Houston? I'll tell you this, this long story short, I ended up, uh, I ended up getting a call and I was at, uh, I was at my job at IMF and they called me and said, Hey, uh, hey, this is this is Exxon Mobil. And I was like, well, this is a it was a contractor. This is a contract there. We're hiring for Exxon Mobil. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then they said, uh, well, we have opportunity to develop for for an engagement manager. I'm like, oh, that sounds great. What's the minimum they're willing to pay? Oh, they're willing to pay like one hundred forty thousand. Oh, one hundred forty thousand. You know, uh, <laughs> that was about eighty thousand more than I was make, I was making at that time. And they ended up hiring me. Oh, okay, okay. So and that's kind of how I came to Houston. You packed up the family and you came on to Houston. Oh yeah, you know, no, no, no one in my family was missing that opportunity. Uh, <laughs> my wife's my wife's already a doctor and a lawyer, so it was like at that point it was like, Whoa. you know, it's finally us. Yeah, combining so that. You income. can't mess up because she can take you for everything you have, huh? <laughs> at this point, she's making a little bit more, so I don't know if it, it might be by his first at this point. <laughs> so you end up going through that. You end up moving to Houston and whatnot, and you fell in love with. Being in Houston, uh, I hope you're not a Rocket fan. Oh, I am not. I'm okay. Atlanta all day. You, okay. You can see from shirt. I, I, I got you. <laughs> Even though I'm not an Atlanta fan, I live there. But uh, um, let's let's move a little further. Okay. What got you to want to do real estate? It's funny. Uh, I was just having uh, dreams about it. Simple. I mean, I've I've been asking God to give me, send me. Send me something. Send me, what do you feel my next steps are? Like, where do you feel, you know, where is the path you want me to go into to be the best version of myself? Because I've been in corporate America now. I've, you know, climbed the corporate ladder. I've, you know, been that that individual who had to figure out, okay, as an African-American, this is how I'm maneuvering this in this space. And I have maneuvered and got to a level where I'm being well-respected by my peers. What was next? And you know, I just kept getting like real estate signs, but uh, it was weird because it was like it was a specific type of real estate. But uh, one day I ended up seeing a commercial on YouTube. It was a uh, for multifamily. I went to the event and I was like, yeah, this is it right there. And so all the visions God was giving me, it just led to that moment. Now, let me do this. Most people in America are still looking to find who they are, okay? Mm -hmm. And most people in America says, okay, this is my niche and this is where I'm directed to go, whether it's a spiritual thing or not. Now, a person at your position making the type of money that you're making, why would you even want to change to something that is unfamiliar? You know what I'm saying? Something that uh, is, is much harder to do when you're on your own versus um, getting a, a corporate check. What, 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 how do someone figure this 
to be, hey, this is the direction I want to go into. I want you to elaborate on that. It's internal. It's all internal. Um, it's that drive within you to be the best version of yourself that you're, you know, I, I was brought here for the purpose. And that purpose is not only to serve God, but to serve, you know, whatever vision that God gives me to go to. And uh, it just got to the point where it was like, this is great what you're doing, but I want to give you more. So do it like this. Talk to the hearts of all the people out there in radio and television land that's listening to your voice right now. And they on that they on that teeter totter where they either making the kind of money you making or a little bit more, or making tremendously less or somewhere in between. And now at the age that they are, whatever age they is, they're thinking about okay, I need something more. And how was it? Uh, as far as the decision, was that an easy or, or uh, uncomfortable decision to make? And if it is uncomfortable, how did you be able to convince yourself to even go that route? That's a great question. A change is not comfortable, first and foremost. Uh, how it came to the decision was a very, it was an easy decision to make on the fly, but it was a very difficult decision to execute in, in strategy, in, in, you know, realistically. Um, I, I had to learn from my mistakes of other businesses I've owned. I've owned quite a few businesses, and uh, for the most part, they have flopped. I mean, the only business that haven't flopped is really the uh, the commodities business. But other than that, all of them have flopped. And the biggest reason why is because I was stubborn. I didn't listen. I didn't I didn't heed advice from those like Thomas. I didn't heed advice from those who I've who've mentored or who who people who've mentored me like Thomas have introduced me to. And so. Uh, what I did was I just said, you know what, I'm just going to shut my mouth and listen. Okay, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to speak about the the flop side because he, he, here's where the rubber meets the road with a lot of people because I've been there. Mm -hmm. One, we are, I, and I tell you, I tell people I hate using the word afraid. I hate using hope, failure, try, and afraid because those words kill you. They really do. People don't understand the value of what the tongue can do. The tongue can either speak life into you or it can speak death into you. And depending on where you want to go in your life, you have to be that kind of a person. So you've done a lot of different things. And as you say, um, a lot of them wasn't successful in your mind. But I'm going to tell you, in, in my mind, they were successful because when you go through situations like that, it's got to make you stronger to be able to accomplish the next thing. So ask yourself when I say this is that how do you pick yourself up after, okay, this didn't work out the way I expected. That didn't work out the way I expected. And knowing that you have a family that you're taking care of, how do you get yourself to do the next thing in spite of what's been going on? Explain Definitely. that. Definitely. Uh, the reason why I did a lot of those things is because of family. Um, first time I started my uh, one of the businesses I started because my daughter was going to be was coming. The second time I did it was because uh, I had another son in the way, so I had uh, three kids. So each time it was a financial reason of I wanted to you know put my family in a better situation. But each time I was hasty. I didn't I didn't talk this over. I didn't I didn't look into all the options I had. You know, we all have the S uh, the SD. LC or you know whatever your small business I think it's I think it's like SB small business association that's right. in our local town we all have that available to talk to to set up appointments with uh, we all have abilities to reach out to people who are doing what we're trying to do in the industry and do that the, those times I did it I just jumped out in there and said you know I just jumped out and and you know head first and said I'm going to give this everything I have and of course it was without details it wasn't it wasn't a lot of strategic planning. There was no business plan into it. It was uh, it was just pretty much me jumping headfirst because I had a, a reason, and my reason was for my kids, right? I had a, I was having a daughter, and then I was having another son. So uh, the the best way I can truly describe those uh, the best opportunities for you, if you're going to take that leap into the next that that goal that you have, which is either real estate or whatever it is, 
there's a lot of assets available to you that you can talk to on a day-to-day basis. There's credit advisors, there's tax, there's, there's, there's uh, CPAs, there's, there's mentors in your field. If you, all you have to do is go to like meet up and you'll see people who are doing what you're trying to do in your field, meet up with them, find out what they're doing. What you might find out is there might be something, it might be a better field that you need to be into that you just got exposed to that you didn't know about before you joined that you maybe need to be a part of this instead of what you're doing, or maybe do both. And so a, a big part of it is learning experience. I learned from my mistakes, but in reality, you know, I'm, I'm a lot, I'm doing this for a better reason. I'm doing this for me. I am not doing this because of another person. Okay. Now I know you and I have several conversations and, uh, I, I, and I challenge you because I was challenged because I'm in my 50, I'm 57 now, you know, I'm about to say by my, my 50s, but yeah, I'm 57 now. And coming from my background, like I tell everybody my story, once upon a time I was ashamed of it, but I'm no longer ashamed of it. No, I did not finish high school, you know, and I was ashamed of it back then and come to understand that I'm glad that I didn't finish high school. Now, most people might say I'm crazy, but the fact of the matter is, is that being programmed and that's the way I'm looking at it because we're programmed to go to school, get good grades, go to college, get us a good job with benefits, but not go to school, get good grades, go to college and start your own business. We come to find out that a lot of our mentors like the, the, uh, um, uh, what's his name? The Apple guy. I can't think of his name right now. Steve jobs, Steve jobs, you know, he didn't finish, you know, and those guys became very successful and, like right now, I'm in the process of writing a book about 50 gurus of of real estate and how they were able to accomplish the things that they accomplished um, as far as uh, whether they went to school or didn't go to school and different things like that. So um, it's 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 a challenging thing. And my thing is now I got to the point where I like teaching and I like challenging folks and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to stop here. We're going to take our first commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to continue to elaborate on this side, and then we'll go even further. Thank you for listening to The Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle, Jr. We'll be back with our special guest. Thank you. Thank you.